Hello ladies and gentlemen, specifically you Russ and anyone else who might be watching. My name is Derek Snedden, you know who I am, and this is MUD Part 2 CS3410 Distributed Systems. We're going to be going over a bunch of cool stuff today. I'm going to be real with all of you. This project was a beast. Uh, probably one of the, if not the hardest projects I've ever done um, in my computer science career um as you would put that so we're just gonna go right through it and i'm just gonna break it down as best i can for everyone um at home in an understandable format so i'm just gonna explain right from the top we're gonna uh start off with uh we obviously do our imports and we're importing sql light 3 we're also importing database.sql those are probably our most important two imports of course we got our format and our log and our os and all that good stuff but you know how it is now, right here, I create a bunch of global variables. Um, each, basically, we have all the all commands, we have the zones, we have rooms, all that good stuff. They're mostly made out of maps right here. We make maps for each one. Maps are like dictionaries, right? And then we have the player object, uh, which gets created. And then we have the SQL database itself. And of course, over here, you might be able to see, this is actually the world.sql uh, database I'm working with the one that I'm using in this project to essentially make a, um, you know, MUD standing for um, multi-user dungeon, essentially make that whole dungeon, and that whole text adventure. So anyways, we have our zone structures containing an ID, names, room. We got a room, which is ID, zone, name, description, and exits. We, our exit is an array of six exits specifically, which the exit structure is right here. Uh, we have a pointer to room, we have the description, which is like the string, and the direction, which is another string. And then we have the player class, which just has the room property, which is a pointer to a room, which is whichever room they are currently in as a player, which is very important to keep in mind. Now, with the function, I put my main at the very end, um, or very close to the end, just so that would be kind of the wrapping it all up with a bow. So with the command loop right here, essentially, we have we obviously loop through all the commands um right there i went over that prior um to this on the previous video we have our add commands all that good stuff now we have our init commands we got smile south north east west uh tip hat look up down and recall and i removed my direction system from last time because the direction system and the movement system now is different so um just keep that in mind now from the do command um we're gonna be looking at look in a minute but essentially how I did this was I added something in the do command to essentially look for the look command because the look command particularly is a bit tricky because if you do look up and look down and look whatever, the fact that there's a space and there's two commands technically being executed um, more or less or a command and a pr uh, parameter of that command um, it becomes a lot more difficult, so I kind of had to brute force this right here, but to be quite frank, I simply don't have the time to implement a full system right now that can handle any set of arguments, um, multi-word commands. So I, I don't have that time, which is all right. Um, so now we, we keep going. This goes through all those commands right there. Obviously, this is triggers if we have a bad command, stuff like that. Uh, and then we have our directional commands. We have command north, south, east, west, up, and down, um, which, you know, they each pertain to the different directions. Now, this is based off of the exits right there. We have like an exit sub zero is based off of, actually, that's all the way down in the main. Um, we have right here our different directions, north, east, south, west, up, and down. Those are each allocated to a specific index, a specific number. So, that way they can be called later on from there. So that's what's up with that, um, just to explain that in layman's terms. And, you know, if the if the user, uh, if we don't, if we try to go north and we don't actually have an exit for north, you know, the description, the length of the description equals zero, which means we don't have a proper exit. Um, you know, I, I riddled off an insult. I said, you can't go north here. You're like an unattractive security guard giving me a pat down at an airport. You know, stuff like that. I add a little bit of fun, also known as procrastinated a little bit. Um, we also have like south, um, you know, and I've got another insult. Again, this takes in 
the south direction. Oh, I don't want to mess it up. I do not want to mess up my code. Um, and stuff like that. We have the command east, uh, so on and so forth. You can't go east from here, uh, so on and so forth. Um, and you know, we keep going down, we keep going down the list and they've got the indexes. They mostly repeat themselves, but they're different enough to warrant them all being separate functions, not creating an individual function run through all that. Uh, of course we have the emote commands. I went over that. Uh, so CMD look command, the look command was really tricky and took a lot of work. Uh, again, this is also going to be processing all of the things that go into that. So, um, all of the different particular strings that go into that you know we read off right here we find the player room and the description using that to find the corresponding exits and then of course we analyze hey are they say asking for north east south west up down that kind of stuff now um now we have the read zones right here so we have read zones and that essentially launches a query and that query is going to go through an error check um, and then if it, hey, like, hey, we're good, then we can run through each of the zones and we can print each of them out right here. Now, um, and then of course we create the zone accordingly and actually you attach it to the zone object and put that in our array of zone objects or map of zone objects. Pretty sure, yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Um, this was an old one I used before, uh, old implementation, and I got that working. But then I needed it to work with everything else, so I needed to reformat that. So it's very, very similar, all that commented code right there. Now, we have read rooms, which the read rooms is an interesting piece. Um, I don't... I found this online, and I'm going to be real with you. The fact that this is my second assignment with a brand new programming language. I don't know entirely what this does right here, but um, exactly. I just know I needed it. Fair? Fair. All right. Um, yeah, so we, we keep going down the list. We do another query. It's pretty similar to the, the zones, but it's got a bit more moving parts. We can create a map of rooms right here. When we keep going down the list, we've got an, uh, ID, zone ID, name, description, exits, you know, that correspond to each room because the rooms have more properties than normal zones do. You know, even though the zones contain the rooms, the rooms simply have more properties, um, and such as like that array of six exits right and um you know this is our error catcher we got an error catcher we allocate the room into a room object push that in we um we append we append that over here do all that good stuff now we keep going down the list uh now we have read exits read exits was really tricky um not gonna lie um it was uh, this whole program was really tricky this whole program was hard it was genuinely really hard and a lot of uh, doc searching and collaborating with a lot of other people trying to figure this out and get this done um, due to kind of the lack of information I felt like I was dealing with. Um, now it wasn't assembly, but there was stuff I could Google about it. But regardless, if we keep going through here, we can run through the scan right here. We've got that error catcher. Again, we're catching more errors. We grab the exits and we allocate them accordingly. Again, I'm giving a very baseline description here keep going we get our log fatal um right there again error logging um we have our player rooms so on and so forth okay cool so this is our main this is probably the whole glue that holds all of this together as mains usually are now um we can keep going we allocate the path we allocate the options you know i i was doing this in the read zones originally and then i did not do that and i switched it around we keep going we open up the path uh, with the SQL light command with the path and the options accordingly we open up the database and we begin our transactions now all of these transaction systems are a bit uh, peculiar but essentially we prepare our transactions we begin them we prepare them we put in the SQL command that we need like select select all from zones which gets all of our zones back and then we go from there and we of course close it now um, very, very similar stuff is going on further down the line. Here's our rollbacks and commits. So like if it fails, also known as not returning a nil, we roll back the transaction because we didn't want to do it. But if it does actually return a nil, we want to get mid. It's a little bit of reverse psychology right there because it actually worked if you got the nil. Yeah, there was a lot of confusion on that. But, you know, if, if you can get it working, you can get it working, right? So 
we keep going we keep going we go through the room read transaction very very similar stuff select all from rooms good stuff all right um we keep going right through the exit uh wow i said prepare exot uh it's it so then we can close it we can read the exits like that and we can init the commands now of course and then at the very end we have a recall command um which right here uh we recall to the original room which is the temple of midgard with two a's very helpfully reminded by a friend of mine um now as just a quick message before we actually run test the code um i just commented this out uh thank you guys for understanding that i couldn't do a live stream tonight i really appreciated that and um one of my viewers sent me that and that was a nice comment thank you now going back to i'm gonna i've got this open up in my um terminal right here my ubuntu well my linux subsystem for windows and so i can go ahead and build that right and we shouldn't get any errors because i've built this a million times and then we can run that and now we can see um in the very shrunken text that we have because it's really small we can see that we're in the temple of midgard we can look and that'll provide us with a north south and uh up directions we can look at uh well we can see like oh yeah you know you see the temple square if you go south you'll go to the temple square um i could say look south and we can say hey we see the temple square we could say we can look up and we can yo we can see the entrance to mud school okay let's go to mud school um if we go up we go to mud school we can look again we can do all those things we can go north we can look again wow i know we can go south so on so forth um you know we can keep looking and keep doing our things and there you go that is the working program of mud part two this assignment was a beast um thank you for watching uh that was a very 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 short and um fast explanation that i hope i gave decently well um yeah regardless um i'm tired so i'm gonna go to bed tonight uh thanks everyone for watching um Catch you on the flip side.